Hey everybody, Geo here of Awaken Geekdom, back at it again with another first impressions video, this time on Magu-chan, God of Destruction. It's a new comedy series done by Kei Kamiki about the character Magu Menueko, this uh, lord of chaos, god of destruction that many hundreds and thousands of years ago was this giant kaiju-like monster that terrorized the world. A lot of people in the past formed like this cult following to it, so there was this order of knights and they disposed of magu by encasing him in this, this gem that very much looked like a seashell and was found thousands of years later by the main character of the series ruru miyanagi this young girl in this beach town in somewhere in japan and she is a very wholesome girl who is very resourceful she's living she's mostly living by herself because her mom is working a whole lot she's at the beach and digging for clams when she stumbles upon the gem here and let me highlight it here with my uh, tablet you can see there this jewel i should say and when she splits it open or actually it was cracked and when she splits it open the character of menueku uh, is released and you know the seal has been broken as she as he states and instead of being an all-powerful monster he turns out to be this funky looking jelly monster uh, that has a huge ego and is very hilarious in my opinion it being a comedy series you're not supposed to take things too seriously with this you have a character uh, lord of chaos if you will this behemoth turned into a uh, uh, tiny alien looking creature if you will and Ruduru who is kind of oblivious to it all and yeah Magu-chan can talk and informs her of what he is and all that stuff but she doesn't really care she doesn't see it that way she doesn't know she just sees this uh, jelly looking thing talking and being pretty hilarious it brings a whole uh, humor aspect and parody to other types of work that you know deal with uh, apocalyptic events and giant monsters and all that stuff and what is adorable about the series is the dynamic between the two so it kind of reminded me as well as stuff like invader zim that type of zany dynamic between characters a uh, fun wholesome characters doing random slice of life things but with over the top tropes involved uh, a human and an otherwise otherworldly creature so if you like that kind of stuff, I think you're going to be right at home with Magu-chan. I've only read what is available as of recording this video, which is the first seven chapters. And for the most part, everything is pretty slice of life oriented, uh, very comedic in nature. You, you could compare it to Umaru-chan or stuff like uh, the, the Squid Girl series like that, where... You can go in, read it, have a wholesome time, and, and just be okay. It doesn't try to do anything larger than that. There are other elements involved with uh, the story. When you have Ren Fujisawa here, who is Ruduru's friend, and he secretly has a crush on her, so he's trying everything to be in her good grace, but obviously falls short because she doesn't see him as a love interest and will... Uh, for example, he's trying to buy her a gift, she gets it and in turn just ends up giving it to Magu-chan because she thinks it's going to look great on him, whether it's a clothing or something like that. Eventually in the series we are introduced to a second uh, creature that has also been sealed away by humans and that is Naputaku, which uh, you can see here uh, looking like uh, a small uh, oogie boogie type starfish which i thought was hilarious and obviously the dynamic of these two uh little creatures who were once giant and fearsome now in their puny chibi forms are uh, at odds with each other and they're having this battle to see who is the best between the two and they're getting the human characters involved also part of the fun when it comes to this series of Magu-chan is the dynamic of having a character from thousands of years ago trying to figure out how humans are living in the current timeline and the comedic uh, hijinks that ensue over him not knowing what a telephone is and being annoyed by the constant ringing so he destroys it or an alarm clock and you have the character of Ruru who 
is finally, for the most part, I would like to think she's by herself a whole lot. So seeing Magu sort of become her friend and later on having the character of Ren join in, sort of uh, growing that circle of friendship and, and that bond of trust and all that stuff, which I thought was pretty great. And one of the my favorite aspects is, of course, you know, how <laughs> megalomaniac and egotistical Magu is, and he doesn't realize how puny he really is now in the current timeline of the series. It's just something really funny about it. I mean, when you compare... Here's a cool image of him. When you compare his original form to what he is now, it's it's pretty funny, you know. He can obviously shoot beams of light and all that stuff, but he gets really uh, tired after using it, so he needs to replenish and eat food and all that stuff to regain his strength. In terms of the art, I think it's pretty nice looking. Nothing, you know, some uh, something middle of the road. The characters are obviously cute and nicely drawn especially uh, Ruru and Magu. It's a very, it, it has a very cute appeal to it. And I could see this easily becoming an anime and becoming a hit later on uh, because it does have that uh, comedic timing between the slapstick humor of Magu trying to do things and being incapable of and the uh, interactions be between Ruru, who sometimes punishes Magu for his crazy antics. I think it, it really does have a nice comedic tone to it and yeah the backgrounds aren't uh too special but it's mostly about the comedic aspect and the interactions between the characters that really matters when it comes to a series like this it's a regular nameless beach town so there's nothing too huge about it but most of the time you're only going to be really paying attention to the uh, characters and what they're doing and their facial expressions and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's mostly a light-hearted, funny uh, series that I do recommend if you want to read something a little bit different, a little bit quirky. I wholeheartedly recommend Magu-chan, uh, God of Destruction. I think it's quite wholesome indeed. Have you read Magu-chan, God of Destruction? Let me know in the comments section down below. I'm very interested in finding out what you thought of the series. As always, you can follow me on social media. You can like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you know when new videos pop up here on the channel. And that's about it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next review.